Hello, I am MS1251A, and in this video, I'm going to explore airbrushing Tamiya Clear Acrylics over Model Master's Chrome Silver Enamel as a base. I chose Model Master as a base because it's cheap and readily available in my area. So let's get started. I start by thinning Model Master's Chrome Silver with one part paint and one part Model Master's airbrush thinner. I will be using my Patriot 105 airbrush set at 20 PSI. I like to do a couple of test sprays on a piece of paper to get the feel for the paint coming out of the airbrush. With a spoon on the right, I want to show what to avoid when spraying. Avoid spraying in bursts directly over the surface. This will usually yield inconsistent layers of paint. Instead, dust on a light layer of paint by using side to side even strokes. I'm not going for full coverage. I just need a tacky layer of paint to help the following layers lay down evenly. I let this tacky layer of paint dry for a couple of minutes before starting the following layer. This layer will be wetter than the first one and my goal is for even coverage across the surface. I let this layer dry for about 5 minutes before spraying the following layer. For my final layer, my goal again is for even coverage across the surface. I want to evenly cover the surface of the spoon the best I can with only a couple of coats of the silver base. Since I will be painting Gunpla in general, applying too many layers of paint may hinder how the parts fit when reassembling it. With the later candy coats in mind, I do my best to spray on as few layers of the silver base as possible while still maintaining even coverage. After letting the silver base cure for about 6 hours, this is the end result. It's pretty shiny and I like it. I also found that with this particular base, you don't need to prime with like gloss black like other paints. For best results, let the Model Master Silver Base cure for a couple of days before applying the Tamiya Clear Coats. But for the sake of making this video, I moved ahead with the candy paint process. For this video, I chose to spray Tamiya X27 Clear Red. I thinned it using one part Tamiya Acrylic Thinner and one part paint. The mix should have a nice milky consistency. I load the paint into the airbrush and set my air pressure to 20 psi. I began the paint process the same as before. I lay down a light layer first. Again, I'm not going for coverage. Just a tacky layer for the following wet coats to stick to. I chose to spray the clear red to showcase how clear coats change in color depending on how many layers of paint are applied. In the first few layers, this to me a clear red lays down more like a clear orange color. When applying fewer layers of the Tamiya clear colors, the colors will be lighter but will have a much more metallic effect to them. However, in the case of the Tamiya clear red, this yielded a metallic orange color, which looks very nice, but it's not what I was looking for. In my experience, only the Tamiya red looks completely different in the first layers. The other Tamiya colors did not suffer from this and stayed relatively close to their original colors. For each subsequent layer, I waited about 10 minutes of dry time between coats. On the 6th layer, I noticed the clear red was not looking as bright red as I was hoping for. I worried that the candy coat may become too thick and not red enough. Since it's going to take a few more coats to reach the red color I wanted to see, I want to take some time and talk about why I chose to experiment with this candy coat method. I chose these paints because they are readily available locally in my area and are very inexpensive. This is nice because if I run out of these paints, I can just stop by my local hobby shops and buy some the same day for very cheap. The nicer Alclad paints are not carried by my local shops and currently I can't afford to order all the Alclad colors I want. 
For the price of two Aqualad paint bottles plus shipping, I can afford to buy the tester's chrome silver base and all the Tamiya clear paint shown in the beginning of the video. At the making of this video, I spent $16.49 before tax on all said paints. At the ninth layer, it's finally starting to look red. And on the final 10th layer, the surface finally has acquired the nice red candy look I was looking for this whole time. And here it is. Though it is not a perfect finish, it looks great for a first try. I'm very happy with the result. It's nice and candy looking. I went ahead and sprayed some more colors off camera and here's how they all turned out. Since it took 10 layers of the clear red to achieve the color I desired, I also decided to lay down 10 layers of paint using the same method for each of the colors shown. The blue and green look especially nice. For some reason the yellow looks a bit matte in the video but it's actually glossy as well. Again, I'm super stoked on the results. I can't wait to airbrush the 90s high grade wing Gundam sitting on my bench right now. This is the first time I've made a video like this and I wanted to share my experience with all of you. I appreciate any input you may have and I'm considering starting a channel with all things Gunpla and scale models. I enjoy building these and I especially love airbrushing them. Thank you for spending your valuable time with me and I hope to see you here on the next video.